In this fourth part of the tutorial, we're going to take a look at three example animations created using the tools and techniques described in the previous three parts. One by one, let's take a look at the creation process of the three animations you see playing. All right, let's start with this first animation here. So I went ahead and I used some art from a previous animation where it was close to the same position, at least for the head, and I'm just moving the parts into place. Onto the next key pose, I duplicated that one, and now I'm going to move everything into place for the second key pose. You can see in the background there I have some motion lines and a few notes. There's a little bit of overlapping action in this animation where her head and hands turn before her body does. And at this point I just move the ear off because obviously as we know we don't want to delete it but it's going to fall behind her uh, head because of the perspective but it would just get in the way as I'm editing her face so I just move it off to the side. Right on to the third key pose. And as usual, I'm leaving the depth values. I can edit those in the cleanup because obviously her right arm and right leg are going to pass in front. Now I'm adding in the in betweens. I add three in betweens between each of the poses and I end up with similar issues to our tutorial where the hands shrink and her face kind of shrinks. Other than that it looks pretty good so I just go in and I edit, make her hands bigger, fix her face, add another in between there. And that's another thing too, is during the cleanup process, if you save changing the depth values, which I'm doing now, if you save that for last and you save removing objects for last, you can still add in-betweens as you see fit as you're adjusting things. So now I'm going ahead and flipping that ear, moving it to the other side, adjusting her face a little bit. The mouth was twitching a lot, so I went ahead and just replaced it all together in each frame. Now I'm adjusting the timing a little bit on the X sheet. There we go. Now I went ahead and added a little shoulder bounce duplicated one of my frames and made her shoulders bounce a little bit. And there you have it. On to the second animation. This one's pretty simple. It's just a little leg stomp. She lifts her leg and sort of crunches her body in as she lifts it and then stomps it and stretches it back out. On to the next key pose, duplicate the image. And in this pose, her arms and her head pretty much stay in the same position, although they move relative to the body. And here I realized I didn't really need to create this key pose. It was just essentially the original key pose, so I just duplicated it. Now I'm adding one in between between each of those three key poses. Just a little bit of editing on this one. 
editing the depth there so the other arm falls behind and there you have it on to our third animation this one's a little more complicated than the others again I've used art from a previous animation where she's in sort of similar position just less work folding her arms up here I just duplicate that arm save myself some time and duplicate that hand in this one there's all sorts of overlapping action under the next key pose so you can see her head turns before her body does and her leg kicks up and her arms sort of come down and again that ear is going to fall behind the head so I just kind of move it to the side because as we know I can't remove it or adjust the depth quite yet. And here's where she does her little slide. Some pretty big changes between this frame and the last frame. Again, making sure to use all the same points in the same sort of uh, roll. Where in the point that lands on the shoulder stays the shoulder, and the wrist stays the wrist, etc. And the ankle stays the ankle. All right, and on to our last key pose. and her head turns back again here adding some in-betweens here we got our standard shrinking hands problem you could practically name it that the leg gets a little funky, so just make a few adjustments, change the depths. I can just remove that ear. And in fact, actually, I'm just sending it to the back. Make her face a little bigger. Duplicate the ear. Now I'm going to adjust the key uh, frames on the X sheet a little bit. Adjust the frames on the X sheet, rather, and make it sort of a sliding motion. Now I'm doing some shearing and some squashing and stretching using the scale tool. Changing her position so she slides, making some final adjustments. And there you have it. So that's it for my four-part tutorial on vector shapes and automatic in-betweening in open tunes. If you found this helpful, please do like and hit subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below.